In this lesson, we are going to look at the communication channels. Uh, the, in this uh, lesson, you are going to be able to understand uh, that information may be carried by a number of different channels, including uh, wire pairs, uh, coaxial cables, radio uh, and microwave links, and also optic fibers. We are going to look at all of these uh, one by one. Uh, but first, let's look at some uh, related issues to the communication channels. Uh, we need to understand uh, what is crosstalk, what is attenuation, and what is bandwidth, and also we will talk about security. Let's start with the crosstalk and its relation with the noise and its relation with the interference. Crosstalk is a disturb disturbance caused by the electric and magnetic fields. Crosstalk is the electromagnetic interference received by one or more wires. And noise is anything that interferes with communication. Uh, one uh, reason behind the noise is the crosstalk. There are some other, uh, uh, I mean, reasons uh, related to noise. One of them is crosstalk. And crosstalk can cause errors. It can cause, cause uh, noise also, and it, it uh, prevents cables from transmitting data. Let me explain what do I mean by uh, electric and magnetic interference of electric and magnetic waves. Now, as you remember from your lessons, uh, when a wire is carrying uh, a current, uh, uh, around this current, magnetic field is produced because of the uh, movement of the current. And if you have a nearby electric line here, if you have another current, <coughs> uh, I mean, if you have another wire, even though there is no current in this wire, uh, because of the current in because of the current in this wire, it produces some magnetic field, and this magnetic field can produce uh, an extra electric field, uh, an extra current in the second wire. Or if you have uh, current in this wire, uh, again the current this is current I one, this is current I two. This current I one is producing some magnetic field, and this current I two is also producing some magnetic field around the wire. And these two magnetic fields are going to interfere, and this current can induce some current in this wire and this current in this wire can uh, induce some other currents in the second wire. Okay, so uh, what about uh, the problems caused by the crosstalk? For example, crosstalk uh, could cause you can hear someone else conversation. And what is attenuation? Attenuation uh, is a reduction of signal strength during transmission. When the signal is transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver, there is some amplitude decrease, and this is called attenuation. And this is called in decibels, dB or voltage. Uh, and also, for example, uh, we can uh, see the attenuation when you go away from your Wi-Fi signal. When you go away, uh, the signal uh, becomes uh, weaker and weaker, and the attenuation takes place. And uh, wireless signal strength can be attenuated due to noise, physical barriers, and long distances. If uh, the uh, if the signal is carried to long distances, uh, attenuation can take place. If there is a, a barrier between the uh, transmitter and the receiver, again attenuation can take place. And because of some noise, because of some uh, electromagnetic uh, interference, also attenuation can take place. Uh, we have a formula for the attenuation of electric si uh, electrical signals, and attenuation uh, can be uh, calculated by uh, 10 times uh, logarithm of P1 divided by P0, and P1 is the power applied to the uh, one end of the cable, while P0 is the uh, power at the end of the cable. So, while attenuation is the loss of signal st strength, the st strength of the signal decreases, we have amplifiers, and amplification boosts the strength of a signal. It increases the uh, strength of the signal. For example, if your signal, this is your signal, and it decreases, its amplitude is decreases, and power is related to the uh, power is related to the amplitude. Its power also decreases. And here we insert an amplifier. It uh, amplify, and again the uh, amplitude of the wave increases. Uh, so then we transmit our uh, signal from one place to long distances by placing ampli amplifier. Uh, at certain distances. So what's bandwidth? Bandwidth is the total range of frequencies required to pass a specific signal. You can you have a signal, you have information, you are going to transmit it from the transmitter to the uh, receiver. So how can we transmit transmit it? If you can transmit it uh, at for example 10 Hertz or only 12 Hertz 
and let's say also 24 hertz if you can transmit it only with three frequencies it means your bandwidth is very small but for example if you can transmit from this transmitter to the receiver uh, frequencies from frequencies for example uh, equal to 10 hertz up to for example 10,000 hertz it means that your bandwidth is very high it means you can transmit the signal from one place to another place with very different frequencies so transmitters and receivers have bandwidths the wider the receiver's bandwidth is the more information it can receive on different frequencies so uh, whenever you tune into a radio when you when you are tuning your radio to find the uh, different stations uh, you uh, actually you are changing the frequencies so the bandwidth of fm radios are ranging from 88.1 megahertz to 101 megahertz and there is a huge uh, range of uh, frequencies so there are a lot of uh, fm radios uh, in a certain area which uh, are broadcasting with different uh, frequencies that's why the bandwidth of the fm radio is uh, is high uh, for example let's look at the bandwidth uh, of uh, a signal assume a, sing a signal uh, has frequencies 125 megahertz 33 megahertz 200 megahertz 800 megahertz so let's uh, determine the bandwidth of the signal so the signal is going to be transmitted uh, uh, between 800 megahertz uh, up to 63 megahertz so the bandwidth is 737 megahertz now let's look at our communication channels and we are going to relate them to attenuation and also we are going to relate them to our other uh, bandwidth and also we are going to uh, relate them to crosstalk interference and noise also okay uh, communication channels the process of delivering information from an information source to a destination through a communication channel so you have a source of information and your message is going to uh, his message is uh, given to the transmitter this transmitter uh, transmits i mean change your signal into electrical electrical signals and there is a channel it can be either a radio wave or coaxial, coaxial cable or it can be twisted cable and then the the, the signal is transmitted through the channel and then it uh, reaches to the receiver and the receiver changes the signal uh, back to for example to voice and then uh, if this is your ear you can hear uh, the the information the sound send you you can hear uh, through this process what is twisted pair, twisted pair cable so this is a pair of cable they are twisted i mean they are not just parallel to each other and there is conductor uh, inside and there is an insulator uh, on the uh, cable so the twisted pair is a type of cabling that is used for telephone communication uh, and most uh, modern inter uh, internet networks so then we have a question why it is twisted but not parallel to each other so you can uh, stop video and uh, deliver your answer think about your answer why it is twisted why because when these two wires are parallel to each other magnetic field here in the in the first wire can affect the second wire and the magnetic field in the second wire can affect the first one so that can then can be there can be uh, interference uh, of electric and electric and magnetic waves uh, and there is going to be crosstalk that's why when you twist uh, we increase the amount of interference and uh, so we increase we decrease the crosstalk there are two types of the uh, twisted uh, cables one of them is uh, not uh, shielded it's not covered with anything but second one is covered with a metal uh, with a metal it is shielded uh, so these are two different types of uh, twisted pair cables so its characteristics uh, it's cheap to construct twisted pair cables and it is easy to work with you can cut them you can combine them easily and uh, analog uh, uh, in the case of analog uh, you can insert amplifiers every uh, five to six kilometers uh, these amplifiers are used uh, for against the attenuation uh, in the case of digital uh, you we need repeaters uh, every two kilometers or three kilometers uh, i'm not going to go into the details of the analog and digital in our next videos you can learn them and uh, limited distance there is for the limited distance for twisted pair i mean you cannot have uh, for example twisted cables between continents for example and there's also limited bandwidth about one megahertz 
uh, and uh, there is also limited data array you can not send much data uh, at a uh, certain time that's why its uh, efficiency is very slow very low so it is also susceptible to the interference and noise these um, twisted pair and they do not completely remove the interference and noise that's why some crosstalk takes place let's look at the coaxial, coaxial cable this is a shape or this is the figure for the coaxial, coaxial cable the coaxial cable is a copper cord cable surrounded by a heavy shielding and is used to connect computers in a network here we have an inner core it is usually made of copper and then there is an insulator this is the insulator and then we have a second conductor and then we have a second insulator and then we have a plastic cover uh, applications of the coaxial cable uh, we can we use them in uh, tv distributions and also we use them for long distance uh, phone transmissions and they can carry up to 10000 voice calls simultaneously uh, and also we use them for short distance computer systems when you need to transmit a lot of information you can use them in short uh, distance computer systems and also we can use them in local area networks lna let's look at uh, optical fibers uh, optical fibers use light to send information through the optical medium it uses the principles of total internal reflection so what is total internal reflection here is a more dense medium and we have a less dense medium and if you send the light from more dense to the less dense medium, it moves away from the normal. This is the normal. Okay, this angle is, for example, uh, this is refraction, this is angle of incidence. This theta r is bigger than theta incidence. Then, when you, if you decrease the density of this medium, the, the light is going, to ref, uh, is going to bend more and more. If you decrease the density of this medium much more then this incident light will not pass to the other medium but it will reflect back it will reflect back to to its original medium and uh, as you see this total internal reflection takes place when the light is attempting to pass from more dense medium to less dense medium okay so uh, you you may go to the uh, our videos related to optics and uh, there you can see more information about uh, optical fibers and not optical fibers i'm sorry about a total internal reflection so let's look at the optical fibers uh, as, as i said here we have a sender it sends the information and this is the light the light does not pass to the uh, other medium here is we have a less dense medium it reflects back to the original medium here we have uh, the same medium same as this one it is less dense and the light do not pass to this uh, medium and it reflects back so the light from the source is reflecting inside the glass and it is transmitted inside the glass and there is no mirrors here there is no mirrors here no reflection from the mirror it reflects just because of the total internal reflection i explained in the previous slide so here is a real optical fiber and this is the diagram for it we have a core this core is a pure glass very pure glass and there's a cladding uh, and it is less dense than the uh, much more i mean dense uh, i mean less dense than the uh, glass uh, for total internal reflection to take pla uh, to take place uh, this is the density of this one is very low then we have a coating and then we have a strength number it is increased increases the uh, strength of the cable and then there is an outer jacket so what are the pros and cons for the optical fibers they have very high uh, bandwidth uh, more information uh, with different frequencies can be carried out uh, less signal attenuation uh, 50 kilometers without repeaters okay or if you are sending information at long distances with fiber cables then you need to place uh, the repeaters or the amplifiers uh, 50 kilometers uh, each uh, 50 kilometers but uh, remember in the case of twisted pair and coaxial cables approximately every 500 500 kilometers and these fiber optic cables uh, are immune to the electromagnetic interference uh, since instead of current if this is an, a glass okay instead of current the light is reflected back and light is reflected and it is transmitted not current is transmitted since there is no current no electromagnetic interference so there is no crosstalk 
okay uh, it is uh, this fiber optic cable since it is made of glass uh, they are res resistant they have resistance to the co corrosive mat materials and their weight is less when compared to the coaxial uh, and twisted pair cables and we have some uh, problems with the uh, fiber optic cables uh, their installation and maintenance is uh, difficult than the coaxial cables and twisted pair cables and there's only one direction communication for one line this is uh, a problem uh, and the cost is higher than uh, other cables other type of cables uh, so the bandwidth of the fiber is limited due to the dispersion effect we place uh, the repeater every 50 kilometer wide because light is dispersed in the medium in the glass that's why uh, the bandwidth is uh, limited in this case let's look at the wireless communication or unguided me media Unguided media transport electromagnetic waves without using physical conductor. There is no physical conductor, no coaxial cable, no twisted pair cables, no fiber optic cables. So this is in this case it is called wireless communication. We uh, we uh, get the wireless communication um, by um, radio waves, uh, microwaves, and infrared waves, and we have a very huge. Uh, amount of electromagnetic spectrum but we are not uh, using all the electromagnetic spectrum for wireless communication we just use radio and microwaves also infrared waves and their frequencies changes from 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 3 kilohertz to 300 uh, gigahertz and infrared wa uh, waves has these frequencies uh, when we transmit uh, the, uh, the signals uh, with radio waves we have uh, antennas and there is omnidirectional antenna it transmits waves to every direction also we have unidirectional antennas the transmitter is at the focal point of the this dish and the, the, the electromagnetic waves produced I and mean, sent from the uh, transmitter here they reflect from the uh, they reflect from the uh, this reflector and here we have another reflector the waves reflects from this one this is the receiver and information is the information is collected at the focal point again okay so we as i said we use radio waves microwaves and infrared waves radio waves are used for um, multicast communications such as radio and television and paging systems and microwaves are used for unicast communications such as cellular telephones satellite networks and wireless uh, lnas on the other hand, infrared signals can be used for short-range communication in a closed area. For example, TV remote control uh, is done with the uh, infrared signals. Let's look at the satellite communication. Uh, satellites are approximately uh, 22,000 miles above the surface of the Earth, and they uh, send the electromagnetic waves, they send signals uh, on the Earth. We have receivers uh, on the Earth at certain places. Okay, It uh, sends the if, I mean, it sends the um, signals to a uh, wide range on the surface of the Earth. And uh, if you have your receiver, you can, if you have your antennas, you can collect information from the satellite. Uh, some satellites send the uh, information directly to certain points. If you have a, a Earth station, it just... Uh, okay, uh, sorry. If you have a, have, a, have a station on Earth, you send your signal from the station uh, to the satellite. And then the satellite sent back, sent back you know, the information to another uh, receiver on the earth this is the way uh, to send the information from one place to another for example this is earth okay you are here and you want to send an information to this point uh, so the way to send information from here to here one way is to use the satellites if you place your satellite here and here is your earth station you can send a signal to the satellite uh, it will uh, take the uh, signal and then it will send it back to the uh, another um, receiver on the earth this is the way to send information from here to here. Yeah, so, for example, if you are in USA, here you can uh, speak uh, with your friend in, uh, for example, Kazakhstan. Uh, this is the way of uh, transmitting your sound. Uh, also, um, you have uh, you can uh, we have this kind of uh, design for the uh, space communication. Uh, we have a transmitter on Earth. It sends the information to satellite, and the satellite sent back this information to a lot of receivers uh, on the Earth. For example, if this is a, a TV uh, uh, broadcasting, then uh, the transmitter sends, sends the TV uh, URL to the satellite antenna, and then it distributes it and it uh, gives back it to the source of the Earth to different, to different uh, receivers. Let's look at some um, more information about 
uh, uh, radio and microwaves, I mean the radio waves. If you have a transmitter on the surface of the earth, this is your transmitter. And here is the receiver on the earth. You can send directly send your information from this uh, transmitter to the uh, receiver. This is called a direct wave. Also, you can send your uh, signals from the uh, transmitter to the ground. It reflects from the ground back to the receiver. These are called uh, ground uh, reflected waves. And also, there is one more wave. Uh, a way you can send your uh, information to the sky and then the uh, electromagnetic waves are reflected from the ionosphere and then they reflect back to the receiver this is another way another way of transmitting radio waves let's look at the uh, ionosphere once more here is your transmitter the waves from the transmitter electromagnetic waves uh, propagate and once they encounter with the ionosphere they reflect back to the receiver uh, so here is the question uh, how or why do radio waves reflect the uh, ionosphere? Remember, uh, or please uh, be careful now, when electromagnetic waves are traveling, when they reach to the ionosphere, here we have ionized, uh, uh, we have ionization here, and the electromagnetic wave is received by the molecules, by the atoms here, they uh, receive the information, and they get it and they uh, vibrate i mean they take the energy from the electromagnetic waves and then while they are oscillating af after taking the ener energy from the receiver they oscillate and then they receive uh, they release back that uh, electromagnetic waves so basically electromagnetic waves are uh, captured by the uh, ionized uh, atoms here uh, once they uh, take the electromagnetic energy they uh, vibrate with uh, high uh, amplitudes and then they uh, give back this electromagnetic waves and then they uh, this is the way to reflect the uh, electromagnetic waves from the ionosphere okay thank you for listening see you next time